What's going on everyone, this is Black Hawk SC, and welcome back to another episode of Underdog Mechs, where we explore the bottom of the barrel mechs in the game. I also have another series called Playing the Meta, which does the opposite and visit the most powerful mechs in MWO. If you're interested in these videos, I'll have these playlists, which I will link in the description. In this video, we'll look at the Vindicator 1X, which at one point was probably among the worst 5 mechs in MWO. But why should you care about this chassis now? Well, I think it's a good example of where meta shifts are making some chassis more viable. Let's not sugarcoat this though, it's still not good, but with the solo queue being more DPS focused, the Vindicator 1X and other mechs with big cooldown quirks can be put to good use. So why was the Vindy so bad before? The biggest reason is hardpoints, like many other mechs. As an Innisfere 45 tonner, it doesn't have the capacity to carry ballistics focused loadout, yet most of its hardpoints are ballistics. You can't boat anything else like energy or missiles, and you can't peek very well either due to its low hardpoints. If you try to mix all hardpoint types, the only thing you can do is a brawl build, but that doesn't work either because any brawl loadout would have to put weapons in the arms, which you'd lose if you try to torso twist. The engine cap also limited its ability to flank and provide distractions. Name any playstyle and you'll be able to come up with 2 or 3 mechs that can do that better. But when I bought this mech, I knew all this, and this was just something to use for gimmicky builds like the Hollander 2 clone that I made a video about before. The Vindicator has since gotten several quirk iterations that made it a viable, but still niche mech. For example, it was once decent at double AC5s and did almost 10 DPS sustained, but that was nerfed. It was also the Solaris 7 Division 7 meta before it was moved up, which was also effectively a nerf. This makes me question what PGI has against this mech anyways. While the current state gives it moderate ballistic quirks but some pretty beastly missile energy and survival quirks. Even with these quirks, short cooldowns initially was not very notable, given how, at that time, the game was more high alpha and peak heavy. The 1x simply can't compete on alpha size. The game has shifted towards DPS since then, and the MRM40 also allows us to exploit that single missile hardpoint and put down a lot of sustained, albeit spread damage quickly. If you looked up builds for this chassis before, you may have already seen this, because there's not a lot of non-joke builds that can be run on this chassis. But I like to show you my optimizations for mid-2019. First, I like to peek and shoot actively, and I don't wait for my team to engage, so I'm going with ER mediums for its ability to reach out further. If you only limit yourself to playing fire support, sometimes you get teams that are too passive, and you don't do much until everybody's dead. By taking some early on peeks, you give your team info about where the enemy team is, and when they're paying attention to you, it allows the team to move up and engage. Second, I leave the left arm unequipped to use as a shield, which would be important if you take peaks and expect return fire. You have so much armor and defensive capabilities with this build that it's kind of a shame if you always let your team tank damage. Third, the LFE allows me to lose the right side completely and still retain nearly all of our firepower. Finally, here's an AMS, which is kind of the thing to do nowadays since the missile health nerf. Actually, I wouldn't take it if I had another hardpoint to work with, or if I can increase engine size. But this is the next best thing. As a bonus, it's free C builds when you shoot down missiles. I think this version of the MRM40 build sacrifices some firepower and gains durability and versatility in the process. This way, it ends up being less risky and performs more consistently. For skills, we want to max out cooldowns and most of durability. Since the build runs fairly cool, we only need partial core run nodes. Okay, let's see this in match. Alright, this is a match on Frozen City, the classic version. Uh, Frozen City is a pretty good map for this build because it's close range, you know, uh, teams get close uh, fairly quickly. And as I mentioned before, I do like to uh, start engaging early on. I'm not just going to wait for my team to tank damage and I just come out the side. I don't want to do that with this build, so uh, I'm up there just uh, doing damage initially. Of course this has some risk, for example, like I just took a dual heavy PPC shot from TTB's uh, blackjack right there um, onto my left torso, and I really don't want to lose that side, so I tried to torso twist left against the Night Star, but, again, but uh, the blackjack was able to shoot me on my left torso, which is not that good. So I kind of have to be careful about shielding left in case I make another mistake, then that right, the left side MRM is going to be gone, which is going to be pretty much the end of my game if that happens. So I'm going to start shielding right as you see here. I'd rather lose that one medium laser on my right arm than, than to, um, to take more damage on my left torso. 
That's a really good UAV from my team there. Shows where everybody is. So if I try to keep peeking that, uh, that left side is going to be pretty dangerous for me now. So I'm going to rotate with my team towards the right. Hopefully get some angles that way. One thing I'll point out is that the MRM-40, the missile hardpoint is located fairly high up, so you can do peaks like this off to the side. Uh, but even if that missile hardpoint is really high up, a lot of times the missiles, because of the spread, will still hit ground, like as you see here. Like some of that missiles at the very bottom of that launch will hit the, the top of the ridge. Uh, even though I've cleared it uh, by quite a bit. The team managed to take out those guys over there. So at that, sh I don't really want to shoot at urban mechs. They're so small that like maybe only you know 15 missiles out of the 40 will actually hit the urban mech, and so it's just not a very good use of my not a very good use of my missiles, my MRM 40. But that's we were aiming at it, so that's what we had to shoot at, at that time. So this Dow Breaker, ER Large Laser Dow Breaker, is going to get pushed on. He's a low DPS build, so we can we can even one v one him if we wanted to. But uh, so, but we have help. That's the kind of risk that you take if you take like ER Large Lasers into a solo queue and get drops like uh, Frozen um, Frozen City Classic. You don't have time to use your range, and your DPS output is just so low. So you can see we can engage uh, shorter ranges as well, so we have pretty good damage output at short range. I've lost my right arm already, and it's fine. I, I don't really need it. It's 5 damage, uh, so the contribution of it is not that much. You may have noticed that in this game I didn't use AMS. Um, it wouldn't have made a real big difference anyways because it wasn't a missile heavy match. Uh, dual heavy PPCs. It's quirk for PPCs. The Blackjack 3 is quirk for PPCs, but it's just still not enough. You can't get enough DHS in there to output a lot of damage in a game, so... Maybe regular PPCs will work on the Blackjack 3. Anyways, we have 40 missiles left, only one launch, and with that uh, last missile salvo, we are able to end the game on that urban mech. So guys, I hope you can see how I play this build. I'm a little bit more proactive, but I think it works out better on average in the end for me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Capella Confederation signature mech, the Vindicator. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe, and I will see you next time.